Popping today, it is time, y'all, for another one of these ecam type demo things. Let me turn off the studio speakers so as not to cause any kind of ruckus. But yes, it is time for another ecam demo. I did realize I wanted to add one more thing to the party over here. Um, we are going to be doing a demo today, walking you through how to use ecam live. If you should happen to come up with a question, you know the rules: throw a Q colon in the front ask your question and you know the rest is there so i know someone's going to ask already so i'm just going to tell you right now the overlay is made from unos.overlay you should probably know that by now if you've been coming if you're brand new you're excused everybody else i've been talking about this religiously for like six months so hopefully, hopefully you're paying attention playing the home game uh let's see let me see, I got Mr. Moderator over here in the Discord. We are ready to go. And we're gonna dive into the demo in just one second. I wanted to add one more thing to the bottom ticker down here. And then we'll just get started with the old demonstration. All right, so first of all, let me get this open. Uh, this is gonna be fun today. I am doing this on a whole brand new setup, whole brand new computer, so um, yeah, this is going to be different than what we normally do. Uh, but you know, I like to mix things up, <laughs> you know, you shouldn't get too comfortable in your setup that way. When something breaks, you don't have like a, a whole like conniption <laughs> because you're not ready. You know what I'm saying? So at least if you do your setup again and again take it down put it back take it down put it back take it down put it back you'll get good at should something happen you're able to get it back in order relatively quick okay let me add this last thing join the ecam fam on v o l l e y bam put that link there da 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 I, I love the fact that I can edit this on the fly. This is just so cool. All right, anyway, so that's in there. And then I can hit a little enter, hit a little tabby tab, and it should be updated. All right, good. Let's get started. Let's do the damn thing. All right. Um, we got our old sound effects over here. Let's put this up. First thing we're going to do is we're going to pop over into live demo mode. This means that you get to see what I get to see in the back of my ECAM. Now, I say this every week, but just in case you're new around here, uh, yours might look different. <laughs> uh, mine is set up the way I like it, so yours might look a tad bit different. 
Um, but don't worry about it. You can adjust. All these panels are completely movable. Let me put this on the right camera just right now. Uh, you know, you can put these anywhere you want. I just like mine like this because I'm a weirdo and I like things to be lined up exactly and precisely as directed. <laughs> okay. So as you can see from my little uh, countdown timer over here, we're talking about scenes right there. All right. So we're going to dive in right away. We're going to talk about scenes. As you can see over here, this is my scenes panel. Uh, you saw this when I walked. And then you saw this when I walked out, <laughs> right? Right? And then we have another one here, which is just, you know, same camera, different layout. Let me put this on the right camera again so I can come over here and do something like rock the zoom and pan and give you the scary look, <laughs> right? Um, I have it set up so that you can see the browser, in which case you see my controls for what I'm controlling over here for this overlay. And then I have my overhead camera set up. And then when we're ready to have, you know, a guest on, I have my guest scene set up. So this stuff is really super easy to do. Uh, one thing that you'll notice is these are adjustable for each individual scene. So I can back this out a little bit. No, that actually makes me smaller. It should be about right there. Oh, that's too big. All right, there you go. Not that Paul and I have the same size head. Um, I'm pretty sure mine's is larger. <laughs> but I could just adjust my camera using the zoom pan to get us, you know, kind of fit and looking even. So you want to think of your scenes. Hold on, let me fix this widget. It's being weird. We need to hit keep running and then build, fill the frame. And then it should stop blinking when we come on. All right. There you go. You want to build your your scenes the way you would think of like an act in a play, right? You want to, uh, yeah, uh, it's, hard, it's hard to describe it, but you start with a baseline and then you sort of work from there. So, yes, that's the, the best way to think about it. Just like acts in a play, you have, you know, your, your intro, you have your act one, something happens, and you go to your act two, something happens. Take an intermission if you got to go to the bathroom, come back and do your next two acts. Same thing. You're putting your baseline there and you're building upon that. So in this particular scene, I have my background, right? I have my camera. Well, the scene is locked. So let me do this. I have my camera here as an overlay. I have the widget as an overlay, which you guys have already seen. And that's it. I mean, this whole thing is literally built out of a camera, a widget, and a PNG for the background. So a lot of people mix the two together, scenes and overlays, right? I don't know how, <laughs> because it literally says overlays. What do overlays do? They lay over the scene, like seriously. So each scene can be different, and then you can add a different level of overlay to each scene, right? And then if I turn this off, right? If I wanted to add another overlay to the scene, you know, can do something like that. So I'm, I'm, I'm like, just think of it as putting uh, dressing <laughs> on a salad or icing on a cake. That's what overlays basically do. So here in the scenes window, we have as follows. Uh, la la. You'll see I have this plus sign here to make a new scene, right? It says right there, new empty scene. I have this double stack box button to let you duplicate the current scene. I have this to build a new group because you can put scenes into a group. I have this to build a new automatic group, which means you put a bunch of scenes in a group and they will change automatically. And then the share sheet is called the tear sheet. This allows you to export those scenes and, of course, throw scenes in the rubash, right? Now, we're going to dive into the overlays real quick. So you can see what I'm talking about. Let me hit this first question. Ooh, I didn't set my size for the questions. Okay, so I'm using a MacBook Pro late 2013. The latest release of Ecamm becomes useless for me as a slow and lagging when I'm live. Um, first of all, not a question. That's a statement. And yes, that is going to happen. Um, 
Yeah, it's rough out here in these streets. Here's why. As an ex-Apple employee, I will tell you our hard line on hardware. Five years for reparability, right? We maintain parts. I say we still. I left the company almost 10 years ago, but I still say we. We maintain reparability for five years. That means for five years, you can go to the Apple store and get it fixed. At seven years, it's obsolete. So that means we no longer generate parts for it. So we no longer support updates for it. So that means when the latest OS comes out, it won't run on a obsolete machine. Now, lately, they've been blurring that a little bit. Uh, this is the curse of a Mac. They run, right? My 2008 runs perfectly fine. It's slow because I know what new feels like. But back in 2008, it was the fastest computer ever, right? And then so what happens is as your computer gets past about seven years, you start running into apps stop working. Like unless you're using Word, you know, Excel, PowerPoint, and a browser, which are very simple apps, you will run into this problem. It, it, is, a, it is a thing, um, mostly because the adjustments that we've made to Ecamm have been mostly geared towards the silicon based computers. And that is for the simple reason that in order to do what the app does now, it needs the power. Live streaming is the second hardest thing you will ever do with a computer, Mac or PC, right? Even your telephone, the hardest thing you can make your telephone do right now is run a live stream. So yeah. I know everybody's on these budgets and things like that, but considering you could buy an M1 Mac Mini for $579 US, um, yeah, you could. I would just do what you got to do to make that go away <laughs> because it's, it's going to happen. And you know what? We're about to rock version 4. So version 4 is definitely going to take that 2013 and just cut it off. You can go to the website and download older releases, but realize that with the older machine, you have to run an older release and you're gonna lose some of the features that come with the bigger builds. But the, the builds have been updated to match the current computers that are out. It is, it is just what it is. And that's the nature of the game for any software. Um, you know, like, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that coming up soon, the latest updates to Keynote will not work good on like my 2008 or my 2012. It's not gonna happen. So that, that's just nature of the game. All right. Todd says, I think of overlays as layers. Yes, I like that. I like that. Uh, profile is like a house. Scenes are like rooms in the house. Overlays are like the furnishings around the house. Oh, oh, okay. I see you, Dana. Uh, let me see. Does this work? No, I didn't plug it in. <laughs> Sorry, let me do this. I guess I should plug in my slappy button because it's funny when you and nothing happens. <laughs> so um, thank you to the people that remember to hit the like button and thank you to the person who hit the dislike button. I agree with you too. <laughs> I, I, I dislike the fact that you had to press the button, but that's all good. Um, and it flies with standard use uh, live streaming. Yeah. It, it, it is what it is, right? And I think that's the hardest thing to wrap your head around is because the softwares make it look so easy, people do not realize how much work is going on when you live stream, but it is a crazy amount of work. Like you're literally moving uh, 30, 24 megapixel images a second for an hour plus five hours if you're Doc and Diana. So yeah, it's, it's just a lot of work. Okay, so I think this kind of covers the scenes things in the nutshells. I'm not going to go heavy into the groups part of it yet, but basically you can take, okay, so for this particular show, I might not use this overhead group and I might not use this guest group. So what, what would I do in this particular case? I would come down here and make a new group and I can say um, in case is what I like to call these scenes. So I'm going to move this group to the bottom and then I'm going to put my in case scenes in here, which is the overhead 
and the me plus guests. I don't need those right now. So I can move those out of the way, make my show look simpler. If I need it, I know that I can reach into my in case folder <clears throat> and grab an overhead shot if I need it or grab a guest shot if I need it. Right. So let's say I wanted to build a three up. Right. So I'm going to come here and then I'm going to do, uh, let's see, host plus two guests. Right. So I'm going to start out here with blank. Most of you guys are going to start with this or you're going to start with the camera. Not that camera. <laughs> this camera. Um, I set my preferences. I would tell everyone in here, set your preferences to default source mode equals blank right there. This is going to be your saving bacon. Just trust me. I, the explanation is hard to explain, but just always start with blank. So this is blank. Now, I have a PNG in my background area. If you look in the overlays panel, it literally says show in background. I have a PNG that puts this on the screen other things that you could put on there. You can run an animation in the background if you so choose, right? Uh, I can do my um, Corona background, like I'm Snoop Dogg over here, right? Or I can use a background from a different show you might have heard of, right? So right now we're just gonna use this picture oriented one. So from here, I wanna add some cameras. So I'll click this button and let me fix this real quick. Um, you see, here's what's irritating me, right? Every time I say add a camera, I get it trying to connect to my iPhone through continuity camera because, yes, I'm running Ventura, all right? So how do we solve this problem? Come over here to your camera effects. Select the camera that you want to be realistic, in which case it is the Cam Link 4K. Scroll all the way down to the bottom, and you'll see a button that says set default camera. Yeah, that. So now when I press new camera, <laughs> I don't have to change it every time. Uh, what are you talking about, Glenda? What outline? What outline? This? What outline are you talking about? Border. Right there. See, border width. You just slide this up and down. I'm on, I'm at 12 right now. Is that the outline you're talking about? Or are you confusing outline with overlay? Because if it's overlay, we answered that. It's in the chat right above your head. Okay, get back over here, wherever he was. All right, so there's the, the camera. Now you see it comes up with the right camera that I want. I'm gonna adjust this to uh, Squirkles. All right, what's up, Gil? Good to see you here. All right, so now we got Squirkles. We're gonna go like this here. Do, 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 do. I happen to like um, measurements, but we not get that. Hey, why won't you go to the middle? Oh, I found it. Where'd it go? <laughs> I, I had it, I had it. Dang it. Oh, I'm just going to guess today. You see the blue lines pop up to help you center things? Mine's not working today. Oh, there it is. There it is. I finally got it. Oh, my God. That took me way too much time. <laughs> anyway, let's swap backgrounds for this particular one. All right. So now I got my, my two guests, right? So let's put one guest over here. Just click on this camera source, change it to guest one. Now we're set for guest one. I'm going to click on this bad boy, come over here, and change it to guest two. All right. So since we're building this scene, and I have my host right here in the middle, moi, and then I want to put my um, host and my guest, my guest names on here. So first of all, let's order this in a way that makes sense. Uh, let's put this one at the top, and then label your stuff, people. It would just make your life a lot easier. And actually, I'm going to move that down to the bottom and put guest one right there. If you label your stuff, it must be great. Uh, 
every single week for the past six months, I've stated where that came from. So there you go. Overlays.uno. The link is in the chat above your head. All right, back to where we at. Let's go ahead and add it. This is the overlay section now. So, so we don't get into any uh, fisticuffs about what we're talking about. Let's jump over here and change this to the next one. Now we're talking about overlays. Tew! Isn't that so cool? That's why you're. Not, I'm a designer and you're not. <laughs> you can do to your show what you do to your show. Okay? Okay. Let me hit over here and click on this text overlay box. Now, when I hit the text overlay box, this is going to pop up here like this. Right? And you're able to type in whatever you want. So let's type something. And then there's my text overlay. Now, I'm going to use this to make uh, lower third for this particular situation. But let's cheat. I'm going to go down to here where I have already made this. And I don't want to make it again. So if you notice, I can highlight any one of these over here. Or I can click on the element. At this particular moment in time, I'm going to press Command C, which is copy. Go back up to this particular piece and hit paste. All right, now I just pasted that bad boy in. So I can attach this to that. And even better, I'm gonna drag this next copy over here. Actually, I'll start it on this one and line it up to the middle, right? And then, ooh, that one is not exactly level. There we go, now it's level. Drag another copy. I'm holding down the option key to drag copy. Um, that option key drag copy is basically the same thing in every Mac program under the sun. So now I could go ahead and add my, you know, other people. Right. There you go. So now we're set. So you mean it's real simple again. To, to build something like this, if I double click this, you'll see it's just, you know, I type in, type in, pick my stuff. Now, here's what's cool. I don't know if you noticed this. I'm using a railway font right now, and I'm using the, the black version for this. But on this part, I'm using the medium version. And then on this part, I'm using medium version at a different size. You can adjust different font sizes or typeface sizes inside of an overlay it doesn't all have to be the same thing so there's that okay what's up spinky so let's do this again just to show you you can make it be anything you want right so the background can be a png a jpeg a gif whatever it's up to you it's your show you do you Let's talk about some more of these types of overlays. So let's bring in an image overlay. You press this button, it allows you to come so over here, find yourself an image, and then you can select on this bad boy. And then the image will pop in, use your scroll wheel to resize it. So I can place the image on the side over here, wherever I want. Now, I personally do not add elements by pressing that button. I normally just start with the finder, go where it says Ecamm Assets, and then grab something like this and just put it there, right? I It's a Mac, so I'm going to always say it's a Mac. Drag and drop that joint. Like, don't spend your time pressing these buttons. I mean, you got to do it the way it works for you, but it takes more time to press that button than it does to do the drag and drop. The drag and drop is life. So that covers the standard way. Let me show you an animated uh, 
image, right? So I have an animated image right here. Again, it's just drag and drop. This is simply put a GIF, right? Not to be confused with a GIF, that's peanut butter. Okay, so now let's talk about some other type of things that you could put in this overlay. Oh, I'll show you one more animated version here. Let me pop this to the back. I'll show you one more animated version. You saw this one. And based off of this new layout, I would bring it up just a smidgen and shrink it just a little bit. All right, there you go. Now that's better for this particular overlay. I also have uh, this one. You see, so we'll talk about how I got those to work with the transparency and the sound in just a brief second. Um, but, you know, there, there it is. Let me wait for this to move out of the way. I actually said this one for kind of long to give people a chance to, you know, do what they got to do. Let me just check down here to see if we have any more questions. Boom. Yo, in the building, good to see you here. Happy that you made it. Oh, now, of course, you can't see that because of the overlays in the way. Let me move the overlay. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Bam. Thank you. Uh, drag and drop is the answer to it all. Hey, what's up, Spinky? I'm glad to see you made it. All right, so let's dive into another type situation, in which case we have the animated overlays. One of the things that comes up all the time, and I'll use uh, a brand new scene from under here. Let's just go here, pop this new scene, is I want to be able to play a movie. So I would pick up my movie film and Hey everyone, it's Shelly from Shelly Saves the Day. I want to send some special love out to my Ecamm fam. You guys know how much I love you all. I you see, when I dropped this in, it automatically muted the main microphone down here, right? So I had to go back and unmute it. And that is designed to keep you from speaking over top of yourself and, and ruining your life. You'll also notice that these... Uh, danger triangles have popped up and that is to let me know that because I have speakers in my studio, it could cause possible audio feedback, right? Um, if you want that to go away, make it go away. However, if you just turn down your speakers a little bit, I suggest you don't mess with that because echo cancellation does affect audio quality. So as you can see, I have the video set here to play. I can tell it start from the beginning or start from the last position. And what that means is if I leave this particular scene. And hey, everyone, it's Shelly from Shelly Saves the Day. I want to send some special love. That started from the beginning. If I come over here and now adjust it to start from the last position, it should stick. It's because I hadn't said it yet. The first. I love your product and I love being an affiliate with you. As well, I have to say. Being an affiliate with EK. You see what I mean? So now the last position, once you do it the first time in a stake, if you make that adjustment, hold on, <laughs> let me go back real quick. If you make that adjustment for your show, make sure you test it first because it will not stick until you actually flip and come back and flip again. <laughs> ah, dragon, he's super silly. The dragon drop, I love it. <laughs> Okay, so that's one of the things about inside the movie. Ecamm not only is a great. You can set your preferences so that it doesn't auto mute when you come in. I would strongly suggest you leave it. Other things that you have up here is loop the video, go to the next scene or end the broadcast. Normally, I, I use go to next scene, but those are completely up to you. You also have volume control of the movie by grabbing this element and moving it up and down so you can control the audio there. Last thing to know about here, it can pull the last couple videos that you have played if you need to play more. So you can just add your whole list right there and they'll stay, or you can clear the recent items and then you'll only see the one that's currently playing. So let's leave that there. And then come back to there. So 
we got image overlay, we got animated image overlay, and then we have the ability to basically um, bring in a movie as an entire scene. Now, to bring in a movie as an overlay, I can pick up the same video of Shelly, but instead of dropping it in the main stage here, I would drop it in the actual overlay panel over here. In which case, I'm gonna get a pop-up that says, do you wanna add animated overlay or play full screen with audio? In this case, we're gonna say animated overlay. Now you get, here's the video of Shelly and it works. However, there is no sound. That is because videos played as an overlay cannot play sound unless they are in WebM format. So how does one create one of these cool, fancy dancy WebM formats? I shall show you. I'm gonna show you with a small one. So if I pop this over here, drop it in, say play as animated overlay, boom, you get the like, subscribe and share. You don't hear any noise, okay? There you go. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert this real quick. Uh, S-H-U-T. Shutter encoder is what I use. You can also use a bunch of websites out there. Uh, <clears throat> there's a lots of ways to do this. Currently, we're going to rock the shutter encoder. So we're paying attention to this little window right here. Now, I am going to pick up this movie and drop it into this area. And there it is, right? I'm going to choose a function. On this drop down list, you want VP9, Victor Papa Niner. Very important, okay? The only thing you need to do is come over here into where the uh, audio settings are and make sure that it stays on. And under advanced features, enable alpha channel. Alpha channel enabling means make it transparent. If you don't do that, you'll lose your transparency. And the thing about making it a WebM in the first place is we want to keep the transparency and keep the audio. That is literally all you have to do. Everything else is completely up to you. I often do two pass and max quality, but for these demonstrations, per actually this is a Mac Studio, so I'll do two pass because Mac Studio would just, just like chomp that sucker like ain't nobody business. All right, I'll leave max quality off. And then again, VP9, make sure that this is set to WebM. And then once it's done, all you gotta do is say start. And it's going to process. And because it's a Mac Studio, uh, not quite an ultra, but it's a Mac Studio Max Max, uh, it's stupid quick. <laughs> so here comes the second pass. It's almost done. You see the log file over here tells you that it's doing the damn thing. And then, uh, yeah, you can even set it up to work when you're not, if you have a computer that's say slower, you can put these things in and press this button down here that says work doing inactivity and it will do the calculations in the background whenever you stop working, say to answer the phone, grab another coffee or whatever, it will do the work. So anyway, this is processing through the second pass and I told you I should have left it at one pass because it's quick, but I, this is actually amazingly fast for, um, this Mac Studio is telling me right now that I have roughly 20 some odd seconds left. And, you know, it normally lies when it says that stuff because <laughs> I don't know who does the calculations for Mac programs, but yeah, it doesn't really do that. It says 14 seconds left, 13. Now it's counting in real time almost, but I bet you it won't take this last 10 because it just skipped. And then come on, Maggie, you almost there. You almost had it. So anyway, in this area, you'll see now I have this WebM file. And this WebM file, when I drop it on, it will be basically what we drag and drop in the Ecamm in order to cause it to work. So again, if you have a slower computer, do not press two pass. Just do single pass. It'll be way quicker. It will save your life. <laughs> you won't have to spend so hard. Okay. Says we got four seconds left. Three, two, one. But the gang, I guess they lied. See, I told you, the Mac calculations always lie. I never did understand why it does that. <laughs> oh, man, come on. And the funny thing is it says that it's done, but I don't know what the heck it's doing. Paul, it's not you, Paul Duncan, but Paul Pacifico. Anyway, 
while it's still thinking, I'm going to move this out of the way because I'm pretty sure the version that's over here will play. Okay, it just made the noise. All right, so you see this file right here? We end up with this WebM. So if I drop this in, it actually works. You see? So all I did was take that file and convert it, and it just bleep. Okay, for just out of pure curiosity, because I'm docking, I can't help myself, I'm gonna take this guy, turn off the two pass, and just say start again and see how fast it is. Yes, I wanna overwrite with a new file. I'm just curious to how much faster it is if you don't put the two pass. Uh, 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 says 16 seconds. See, it's quicker, nine seconds. It, it, man, this thing does not know how to count <laughs> at all. <laughs> I think it's super hilarious. Done. Okay, see how much faster that is if you don't put the two pass? And it doesn't change the outlook on this at all. It's just us, people like myself and Jared, who've been doing video forever, we will always tweak out and pick, let me see the highest quality. So here's the other thing. Now, this is going to take a little bit longer, but... It's worth showing you guys, and we can let this one run in the background while we do something. So let's go grab Shelly. Well, not physically grab her. She'll beat that ass. Just grab this one. Put it right there. Um, actually, let me clear this guy out. I'm going to pick up Shelly's video. It's 56 seconds long. I don't need the alpha channel, so I can turn this off because that will make it slow down. But I'm just going to do it single pass and then just say start, and we'll let this run in the background while we do something else. But you'll see the reason why I wanted to do the one um, with Shelly. You'll see in just a brief second. The other thing to note about this, uh, this particular file of Shelly is roughly 350 megabytes. Watch what happens to the WebM size once it's done. You'll be amazed at how well it crushes videos for file size. So I often use WebM just as a way to make video size smaller if you wanna play videos into, into your stream. If you wanna play videos into your stream, and especially if you have a slower computer, I would say convert them to WebM because they're much smaller file sizes. Okay, so. To what's crack a lacking? Long time no see. How do you delete a video from a scene? It's always for issues that I import an MP4 that takes up a scene. Uh, well, two ways. I, I kind of just showed this. Way to make money, but I don't even feel like it's any work. I feel like you guys shouldn't be paying me for it's so easy i just tell people all the time i love ecamm i use ecamm hello ian nancy gray here i have been using ecamm live since it came out just about i bought my first mac i love hey everyone it's shelly from shelly saves the day i want to send some special love out to my ecamm fam you guys know how much i love you that all whole time i, was I love your that, that didn't make any sense <laughs> hold on let me do that again hello ian nancy gray here i have been using ecamm live since it let me uh, set the preference so I don't have to keep fixing this. If you go to da, 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 video, autoplay video files. Uh, no, it's under audio. Automatically mute microphone during video playback. I'm going to turn that off just for now. Okay. So as I'm here, I'm playing this Ian video. You know, the Shelly video is still back there. You just switch hey it. everyone, it's Shelly from Anything Shelly Saves the Day. Want, I want to send some special love out to my... So that clears it, and then the Ian video is no longer there. If you just want the video to go away, just switch to blank. And then now the video is gone. It's not in the scene anymore. Or pick camera, or pick, you know, screen share overlay, right? Basically, this is not... How do you describe it? It's not that a video is at the scene. This is the movie player. When you click this little cheek lay up here in the top corner, this is the movie player. It's going to play whatever you have selected in the list, right? So if you no longer want the video to play, you can either go back to camera, you can go back to screen share, or like I say, always, always go to blank. Command shift B, right? If for some reason that doesn't make sense to you, come up here to scene source and the first one is blank blank camera screen share video i say always start with blank aka command shift b it'll make your life better 
If you start with blank, you'll never have a problem. That's just the way the, the kuke crumbles. All right, so let's go back to here, right? Ba -ba -ba. Then we're going to get rid of this. We don't need that anymore. All right. So I hope that made sense, TVD. And then my other video is almost finished popping. So that covers those. Let's do screen shares real quick. So I'm going to go back to this particular file. And then I'm going to click on the screen share icon here. That basically allows me to see any application on my computer. So we're going to pick Googly Chrome. And then you can adjust how the shape of the box is over here. You can also do custom, which would allow you to do, you know, sort of whatever you want. I'm going to leave it kind of like that. And then I'm going to take off the border for this. But no, I better leave it because it helps sort of demarcate things a little bit. If you needed sound to come through this, I would click activate system audio capture. I don't need sound for this particular screen. And you'll notice that I have rounded corners on this side, but not this side. I can press these little cheek lays to add rounded corners to all sides or no size or one side or two sides. You can adjust accordingly. Okay, so now I'm gonna pop this back up here and then pull this over. So any application on my computer that I wanna share um, you can do it that way. <laughs> uh, Paul, you're going to cause fisticuffs, but <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay. Let's go back. I want to show you one other thing. So I got my screen share overlay and we're going to leave that, but I heard the little thick gunk sound that says that this video from Shelly was done. So Remember when I was showing you guys, this one here is roughly 345 megabytes. This new one is 40, four zero. I don't know if you can see that in this tiny little window down here. We come over here, Mary. Look, four zero as opposed to 350. Okay, now watch this. Talk about, oh, the quality must suck. Yeah, feel this player. Hey everyone, it's Shelly from Shelly Saves the Day. I want to send some special love out to my Ecamm fam. You guys know how much I love you all. I love your product and I love being an affiliate with you as well. Pretty dope, right? I have to say, right? being an this affiliate with Ecamm, you got not webmail. only is so, a great way to make money. So listen, like if you got a slower computer or you just want your stream to run smoother, pre-production. Everybody always freaks out when something goes wrong during the stream. And I say, how is your pre-production? Well, pre-produce yourself off. Go ahead and get your uh, get your WebM together. And then look, you got like pretty much, there's no, no heavy degradation in quality, which is why YouTube has switched all of their compression to WebM. They made it up for the purposes of YouTube. Google invented it. But as you can see, I get to play this video with sound. And because it's an overlay, I can move it any which way I want. And I could come over here and we could be talking about, you know, the devil in Ohio and how the ending sucked. And then I can play the clip here. But I don't even feel like it's any work. I feel like. Yeah, me neither. I don't feel like it's any work either, Shelly. You see, so you can do some cool stuff like that. Yes. I made it a webm. Uh, we this was maybe right before you walked in. I was showing everybody how to use Shutter Encoder. Um, there, there's a video on my channel for sure on how to do it. If not, just Google Shutter Encoder and life is good. Life is good. I'm telling you, it is a game changer. Anyway, let's go. Let's go. Let's move on. Get back to here. So we cover screen share. We cover text. Let's get into some clocks real quick. I can click this bad boy. You can see I have my countdown. I'm going to tell you switch to a fixed width font because regular fonts, they bounce all over the place. Uh, I know these guys aren't exactly beautiful, but they do work. <laughs> um, if you do some Google searching and find yourself a good uh, fixed width font, you can set up a pretty decent like clock that doesn't look absolutely trashy but you want to have a fixed width font because otherwise your numbers as they you know one to nine are like two different widths right so you could put your timer in here 
Uh, you can set the timer to go to another scene when it's finished. You can set it to start or auto start. Other things you can do is count down to a particular date and time. So uh, in this particular case, we want to count down to noon every day. And then that's going to give us a timer. Why did I do that for? Why not work? Count down to a time every day. Oh, there it is. I don't know why mine didn't want to work. <laughs> but anyway, um, you also have countdown to a date and time, right? So we want to put uh, 12, 25 at 0001. Dude, don't be weird. There we go. So we got 71 days until Christmas, right? And then you can adjust your border size if you want to have a border or not. You can adjust the corners, make it more rounded, less rounded. If you want, you can give yourself a little margin if you want. And you can change the background color if you want, right? So when I press this, a color wheel thing pops up, just jumped all the way to the other side of the screen. But here's my color thing. Most of you guys see crayons. I never use crayons. They're useless. I use the second one and switch it to RGB slider, which is command two, in which case you can put in your hex codes. So if I wanted this background to be Ecamm blue, I just pop over here, copy that, press this bad boy, paste in Ecamm blue, boom. Well, that was the text. I meant the background player. <laughs> there we go. Now let's put the background on Ecamm blue. There, now it's perfect. You see? So there you go. Let's say I wanted this background to be Ecamm orange. Come over here, highlight this bad boy. I already have it, as you can see. Dang it. <laughs> I did it again. I hate when I do that. It drives me batty when I do that. Anyway, you got to remember to click background first. And then if I select Ecamm orange, you'll see it's there. Let's see. I wanted to pick another Ecamm color. Let's pick the Ecamm dark purple. Uh, click on my little background color thing and then paste in the ba -ching. boom purple Urkel. so there you go you can build your timers that works for your fonts that things everything no i i drag and dropped it into shutter encoder here i'll do another one in the background see this ian anderson gray video uh well that one's small because i did it already let's do i have another video do I have another video? Anyway, I'll just use Ian anyway. So here's Ian's video. It is 27 megabytes. If I drop it into here, set this bad boy to VP9, because that's what it is, and then set the ending to WebM, because that's what it is, and then just say start, it will compress the video and make it smaller. So it's running in the background right now, and when you hear the tickle -tick -tick -tick, then you'll know that it's done. Okay, so now that I made that little timer selection type thing, let's go over here. Got one more we can do. We can do a standard issue clock like such, which just tells you what time it is, which I kind of already have up here from my overlay. Or I can do it as a stopwatch. So if I had something where I was doing a quiz show or something, I'm like, and the next 10 seconds, everybody hit the like button, you know, like that. There you go. So those are your timer sections. <clears throat> that particular font, not good for timers, <laughs> as you can see. Um, now we're going to talk about widgets in a second, and this will make all the more sense in the world because you'll see what I did. Cause I'm going to go make some changes to this widget. Okay. It's almost done. There we go. So here is the Ian video, and it didn't do much because it was already smashed. But if I drop Hello, it, Ian Nancy Gray here. I have been using Ecamm Live since there it, it is. came out. Just about, I bought my first Mac. Oh, I love like this? the product. I've been talking about it for years, and I love the community. I love the family of if Ecamm Live, case, and being able to do. talk about it across my blogs, my podcasts, my live shows. And being an affiliate, so get some commission it. for doing that just makes so much sense. And just like it's uh, another revenue stream for me. So I love just the size. 
Uh, you can also just grab Bro, the edge Yeah, Ian Nancy Gray here. I have been using like Ecamm Live since it came out just about. I Let's bought my first Mac. I Zip it, Ian. There you go. Yeah, everything here is use the scroll wheel to adjust the timing. Okay, so let me drop you guys over to here to this browser. So this widget overlay is generated by a company called overlays.uno. They are the business, right? I think it's the coolest thing since sliced bread, especially for people who don't know how to design. Uh, yeah, come over here, click on this like overlay section, find something in here that pops your socks. The one that I'm using today is this one right here that has the picture in it that says uh, Sammy Streamer. I didn't want to do that, but you can come over here and grab any one of these overlays. And then to just use one, you click on the button and it takes you to a back end that looks like this. And this particular back end, I have control. So for instance, I have the ability to have a live bug on or a lower third or talking points or a ticker. Okay. So for, for S and G's, I'm going to add the widget over here as well. So I'm going to click this guy, copy URL, got the URL on my clipboard. I'm going to come over to Ecami here and press on this little globe, right? You see where it says new widget? I'm going to press on the globe. All right. I'm going to pick this bad boy and I'm going to pop it in. I want it to be full screen. So 1920 by 1080. If you don't memorize those, you're on your own, fam. I can't help you. <laughs> it's, it's kind of important to remember memorize, you know, your basic 1920 by 1080s or 3840 by 2160 or, you know, uh, 1280 by 720. You got to memorize those. Nobody else can do your homework for you. All right. So I'm going to put that in and you'll see here is the widget, right? Now, I am going to come over here and turn off this button that says live bug. Right. And you'll notice up in the upper corner, the live bug is going off where it says live from Honolulu. I have a lower third, which I didn't use because, well, didn't like it. So I turned it off. Right. So you can do that. Then I have my talking points. I can turn them off, turn them back on so you can get fancy with your show. Here's the cool thing about this is, uh, Paul can control this because I can send this link to someone else like Paul or Luis or Keely or whomever, and they can control it for me. Uh, here's my ticker on the bottom and then I'll put my ticker back on. Okay. So in my live bug, if I hide it there, right? I just use these to set my colors, put with time and stuff that's in there. I have the lower third. I have it off right now, but I just typed in my name, you know, right there in my ticker. Here's all the text that I pasted into the ticker. And this is what you're watching come across the bottom of the screen. And then over here, I have my customize my layout. Cause right now you're looking at the flat style. Let's see. I want to gloss it up. It looks whack to me. I don't like that, but Hey, you do you, or you can do a gradient. Also looks like 1980s. Your homie don't play that. That's whack. So I go back to flat. I can do everything in uppercase. It looks like you're yelling. So I don't do that. <laughs> I'll leave it at everything in lowercase. Looks like you're five. Don't do that, right? You can capitalize all the words, but then they capitalize N, which is somewhat of a pet peeve. Or you can do upper and smaller case, which is cool. I like this one, but in my particular case, I just leave it at none. Just do the dang thing, right? And then this last one is just how many things you want to see on this panel so you don't have to do this if you don't want to. That's really controls nothing for your layout, but that's it. So all you do is you fill these things out over here. You copy this URL, you paste it in the Ecamm and you're good to go. So that is how I did it. And as we're done now, I am done with, uh, overlays in general. So I want to go to audio effects and you can see here in my talking points, right? Um, it's hard to see on the screen, but right here it says talking points. What I'm going to do, it currently says active topic is two. I'm going to up. Now the active topic is three and we'll be on to audio and effects. If I go to this one, it'll be overlays. So in Ecamm, 
let me come out of demo mode for a second to give you guys a better look, right? If I want to take it all the way back to zero, Brian McKnight, we started back at one, right? When I'm ready, you can do this. And then after that, I can hit this again. And again, without me controlling this, I could take this whole entire thing, copy this URL, pass this URL to Paul, and Paul would be able to make changes or my remote producers could change these guys for me. Also, you'll notice currently I'm using this on the right side of the screen. I could switch it to the left side of the screen. Now, here's what's crazy. I can make two different instances of this to have basically the same stuff and have one for the left and one for the right and just have my two different widgets on two different scenes and it'll be kind of good to go. So you got options, like you got options. This thing is really cool. And the best part about overlays.uno for right now is uh, free. <laughs> uh, they should definitely be charging um, because it's pretty dope. So let me go to audio and effects because that's where we be. And then I'll go back to my master screen here and you'll see that it follows along. Boom. Michael said, how is the function for streaming to two locations working out? I guess it works smoothly. Me personally, I never, ever, 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 ever multi-stream unless somebody makes me. I can't stand it. It's horrible. Don't do it. <laughs> but yeah, people don't listen to me because they're listening to their ego. <laughs> Your ego says, try to be everywhere so that you can get more viewers. A professional presenter says, I want to put everybody in one spot so they can communicate with each other and build community. So which one's more important, your ego or the community? Stream to one location. <laughs> That's it. I'm done. I know everybody wanted it, so we put it there. We put multi-streaming for the whole planet because everybody wanted it. But trust me, nothing sucks more than for you to be the one person on LinkedIn while everybody else is on YouTube and then you want to talk to somebody or get your comments seen or feel like you're part of the party. It's just, it's silly. But everybody likes it, so knock yourselves out. Doc is anti-multi-stream. It doesn't really work that way though, Rich. And I get why everyone thinks. They think if I stream to 17 places and I get two people at every place, then I'll have 34 people watching my stream. Yes, but <laughs> those 34 people can't talk to each other. So they can't build a community and they don't get to be like this where you guys all know each other. You know what I mean? So yeah, and there's there's no issues. that. that it's not a software thing. Multi-streaming is not really a software thing. It's an internet thing. I could turn a button on right now and stream to like seven places because I got fat bandwidth. Um, but just don't. <laughs> I just don't. But if you want to do it, knock yourself out. It works flawlessly. So you can. You can do it. But I'm going to just suggest. As a coach, I'm going to suggest against it. <laughs> Uh, pro presenter. I guess it kind of works. I would just make my lower thirds in Ecamm or Canva. I think for a better look, yes, you can do it with pro presenter. It's a better look if you just do them in, in Ecamm or Canva or Final Cut or Photoshop or somewhere like that. They're just better overall looking quality. <laughs> you like, oh, Rich, you like the multi streaming? Yeah. Uh, let's see. My, my bandwidth is 500 by 50. There you go. This is also true. When, you, when you're when you doing that, it's hard to get 
true analytics on what's going on with your stream. So it's hard to get a full understanding of what's working. That is what we in the army used to call the spray and pray method, as opposed to snipers, one target, one shot. Spray and pray uses like 300 rounds and possibly hit nothing. So yeah, I think, I think targeted sniper approach is way better. Um, well, experientially, I can say it's way better. Anyway, let's uh, get into audio and effects. So over here, back in live demo mode, we have our sound effects panel. Don't be confused by my little palette thing. That has nothing to do with it. <laughs> this is the sound effects panel. You can see I have my master song. You can see the level of control here. You can make it softer, louder, right? I like to leave it at about 80. You have your air horn, which will play over top of the music now. Before it didn't used to do that, now it can. And you'll see now there's also a timer to let you know how much time you got. Individual level for individual tracks can be adjusted by moving this slider here. And you can loop a track by pressing the loop guy over here in the corner. Um, so you'll notice I have little letters next to these. That's because DJ Doc Rock. DJ Doc Rock. If I hit the R, if I hit the R, that's because I set that keyboard. So this is a little pop sound. If I want to click that, go to high key, hit P. Now when I press P. There you go. So you can add high keys like such. You can remove that. Um, another thing that I can do is click on this guy, say add to scene. And now when I step out the scene, it goes away. When I come back, it can play, right? So you have that capability there as well. I need to put back on my overlays. There's a gearbox here that you can set. You can say stop when the scene ends. If I check this off, now it will continue playing. So when I go to the next scene, it's still there. When I go back, it's there. When I get rid of it, I just boom, out of there. So there you go. There you go. There you go. So that's the uh, sound effects area. Then in the audio section, you see me play with this a couple times today. Down cha. Wait, let's get it right. Boom. So you can see I'm using my Rodecaster Pro 2 channel. Unmute that channel. I have my movie sounds, my sound effects volumes, my system audio volumes. And me personally, I like to leave everything at 80. Why? And that is because if someone says, hey, can you add more volume? You have room to add volume. If you don't, then you're stuck, right? So the last time I did an interview, I had to crank it up a little bit. So I leave everything at 80. Someone says, Hey, I can't hear Tatiana. I can just boink, crank her back up. If you leave it at a hundred and then someone says, make her louder, you got to ask her. And then she might be in the middle of talking and then it just causes like issues. Also because it mocks with the sound and that's it. Let's see what Tati said. Uh, Yes, they remain active until you change them in Ecamm. This is correct. And they are active per profile. So what I mean by that, for Tatiana's sake, over here in the profile, I'm currently using my default show, but I have the flow for the podcast, and I have another stream here. Um, these all show different looks and feels as we do that, but it will stick accordingly. Okay, so let me go back over here and do one of this. Bam. All right, let's talk about camera effects real quick. You guys saw me earlier playing with this, but I'll use this guy here. So the zoom and pan allows me to adjust the size of my image, right? So you can kind of put that how you want it. Um, 
we have the of course the green screen and the blue screen we don't really use that mess but hey people like it your fade level controls how good it works you can make it transparent so that you can see the background so if i were to put on my other background it would look like i'm at the beach my blue screen doesn't really work because it's purple it's not exactly blue but i mean it's it's kind of attempting to do the thing then you can mask the edges a little bit and blur the background more if you want to make the background more blurry i don't know not 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 my area of expertise uh we have picture settings over here make it brighter darker things like that i'm going to tell you adjust these in your camera to the best of your ability only use these for minor tweaks they do not work as really really good um if you're running a mac studio it should work flawlessly um this is a mac studio with 64 gigs of ram and I haven't been able to cripple it at all yet. So that'll probably work perfectly fine. I wouldn't suggest anybody on anything less than, say, 16 gigs of RAM attempt that. All right. So there's that. Picture settings. You can mirror these pictures. You can do black and whites. You can add a sepia tone. You can blur if you want to be in witness protection program. These are all things in the beta, which are coming out very soon. You can download the beta right now by going to ecam.com slash beta. Some of this stuff you won't see in your regular version, but the beta works basically perfectly. So download the beta if you want to play with the extra stuffs. And that's it. That's the camera effects mod duo. And let me just run through some questions real quick. Make sure we got everything. I was kind of doing them on the fly, but not. We got seven minutes until we get to uh, affiliate trading. All right, that looks good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, I said that like six times. <laughs> oh, I'm going to do it again. I literally said that six times during this demo. These warning signs are because I have speakers. If you hit this, they again because I have speakers in my studio. If I were to set my output to something that doesn't make noise, I don't even think that'll work. I don't have anything on my system right now that's going to set it up to where the output doesn't make noise. But if you happen to have a audio setup device that can be triggered as it won't make noise, then that would work. But unfortunately, it doesn't. So they're there because I have speakers. My speakers are turned down, so it doesn't mean anything. But yeah, I, I said that like a whole bunch of times in this demo. Boom. There you go. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Gang, that's it. It's time to go uh, just drink water real quick and do the affiliate training right after this. Same spot. So I'll be right back after a couple of minutes. And uh, yeah, thank you guys. Don't forget, every Friday we do this. So it's good to be back in the studio. Good to be back doing this again. And uh, I will see you guys on the old flip side. Yeah.